Put on gloves. Select a microscope slide. Select a pipette and select a urine sample. Remove most of the supernatant fluid and dispose of it correctly. Ensure the sediment is not disturbed while doing this. Resuspend the sediment in the remaining supernatant fluid by either flicking the tube or gently shaking it. Pipette up a small amount of the remaining supernatant and sediment. Place one drop onto the microscope slide. Carefully place a cover slip over the sample, avoiding air bubbles. You can use a needle to do this. Label the slide with the date and patient identification. Dispose of the used pipette, urine and used materials into the clinical waste bin. Place the microscope slide on the stage the correct way up. Look at the stage directly whilst racking it up so that it is positioned just below the objective lens. Look down the eyepieces. Adjust the coarse focus to focus the microscope. Adjust the fine focus. Methodically scan the area of the slide to locate a crystal using the battlement technique. Place the crystal in the centre of the field of vision. Put on gloves. Select an EDTA blood sample. Mix the sample gently. Remove a plain capillary tube. Insert the capillary tube into the sample, holding the EDTA tube at an angle. Fill the capillary tube to at least three quarters full. Place a finger over the top end of the tube or keep the tube horizontal. Remove the capillary tube from the sample and wipe the outside with a tissue. Plug the end of the capillary tube with a soft clay sealant Dispose of clinical waste appropriately Ensure the capillary tube is at least three quarters full for a diagnostic PCV Place the capillary tube into the microhematocrit centrifuge with a clay plug against the outer rim. Screw the inner safety lid down. Close and lock the main lid. Set at 10,000 revolutions per minute for 5 minutes. Place a prepared capillary tube into the PCV reader with the sealed end at the bottom.
Ensure the bottom of the red blood cell layer is at the zero line of the reader and that the top of the plasma is at the 100% line of the reader. Move the adjustable PCV reading line to intersect with the top of the red blood cell layer. Record the PCV result correctly as a percentage. In this example, it reads 45%. Place two to three drops of distilled water on the prism surface of the refractometer. Close the cover, hold the refractometer up to the light source and look down the eyepiece. Using a screwdriver, calibrate the refractometer to 1.000 on the urine specific gravity scale. Lift the cover and dry the prism surface using a dry tissue. Put on gloves. Invert the tube to gently mix the urine sample. Pipet one to two drops of urine onto the prism surface. Close the cover. Hold the refractometer up to the light source and look down the eyepiece. Read and record the actual urine-specific gravity reading. Rinse the prism with water. Dry the prism using a dry tissue. Dispose of used materials into the clinical waste bin. Check you are familiar with the urine test readings. Remove one test strip, replacing the lid immediately. Cover the test strip pads with urine by dipping or using the pipette and tap off excess urine. Immediately note the time, wait for the appropriate length of time and read and record each dipstick measurement correctly. Dispose of the used dipstick into the clinical waste. Put on gloves. Select a microscope slide, 
clean the slide using ethanol or absolute alcohol and dry the slide with a lint free tissue. Select an EDTA sample. Gently mix the sample. Select a plain capillary tube. Insert the tube into the blood sample and draw up a small amount of blood. Place a finger over the top of the tube or keep the tube horizontal to prevent leakage of blood and remove the tube from the sample. Dot a small amount of blood near one end of the slide. If you're right-handed, place on the right of the slide. If you're left-handed, place on the left of the slide. Discard the capillary tube into the clinical glass waste bin. Select a spreader slide and clean and dry the spreader surface of the slide. Hold the blood sample slide firmly on the work surface. Place the spreader slide in front of the drop of blood. Draw the spreader back onto the drop of blood and allow the blood to spread along the edge of the spreader. Push the spreader forward across the slide in a single smooth motion. Rapidly air dry the slide. Label the slide with the date and patient identification. Ensure the smear produced is of reasonable diagnostic quality. EDTA sample used and the smear has an edge and a tail. Here are four examples of non-diagnostic blood smears. The first smear demonstrates grease left on the slide. This is indicated by areas where blood has not adhered. The next smear demonstrates hesitation bands indicating a lack of smooth motion made by the spreader slide. The next smear indicates too little blood used, producing a short smear. The final smear indicates too much blood used, producing a smear more than one cell thick. Dip the slide into the fixative solution, five times for one second each time. Allow excess fluid to drip back into the jar. Dip the slide into stain solution 1, 5 times for 1 second each time. Allow excess fluid to drip back into the jar. Dip the slide into stain solution 2 five times for one second each time. Allow excess fluid to drip back into the jar. Rinse the slide with distilled water until the water runs clear. Place the slide vertically and leave to dry. Check that the rheostat is turned to the lowest setting to avoid damaging the bulb. Turn the microscope on. Rack down the mechanical stage to as low as possible. Select the lowest power objective lens, times 4 or times 10, depending on the microscope available. Place the microscope slide on the stage the correct way up. 
Look at the stage directly whilst racking it up so that it is positioned just below the objective lens. Alternatively, rack down the eyepiece to the stage depending on the microscope. Adjust the height of the substage condenser to a few millimetres below the stage. Adjust and look down the eyepieces. Adjust the rheostat to a medium setting. Adjust the coarse focus to focus the microscope. Adjust the fine focus. Place the parasite in the centre of the field of vision and focus on the parasite on the prepared slide. To read the vertical vernier scale, take the first division on the main scale that corresponds to the zero on the small vernier scale. If, as in this example, the zero falls between two divisions, take the lower reading. Take the second reading from the first point at which a division on the small vernier scale corresponds exactly with the division on the main scale. Record your reading, in this example 109.6. Read the horizontal vernier scale in the same way. Record your reading, in this example 35.3. You have now read the vernier scales correctly.